Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's video is from uh, chapter number 17, Application of Fourier Transform from uh, Mr. Alexander and Sadiqo's book. And this is on the request of a student from Iraq. So let's see. This is the question he has sent. Uh, find the response for the circuit for the sawtooth wave given here. But I, I found this exactly same question in the book, except for the magnitude. So the magnitude is six instead of one. So we'll be solving this problem, and this is from the fifth edition of the book. So I hope the student can, uh, instead of six, do it with one and get the same answer, a similar answer. Okay, now the practice problem says that if the sawtooth wave of figure 17.9, and this figure is from the practice problem 7.2. So this is the sawtooth wave given in the practice problem 7.2. Is the voltage source in the circuit of figure 17.22? So this is the voltage source. The sawtooth wave is the voltage source of the circuit. We have to find the response V0T, that is the voltage across the capacitor. Now, a couple of things. Uh, we know the fundamental frequency is in radians, written as 2 pi over T, or you know, it is 2 pi F. F can be written as 1 over T. So this is omega naught, and for nth harmonic, we write it omega n, which will be n times omega naught. Now in our case, if you see the time period is one, because the same uh, signal is repeating. So from zero to one, time period is one. Omega is 2 pi over t from here, so it is 2 pi and t is 1, it will be 2 pi. And then the signal can be written as 60. Now, how do we write 60? So let me let's go back and see the basics. We know the line equation y is equal to mx plus c, and m is written as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And if you see from here, this is y2, this is y1, that was 6 and 0. And this is x2, this is x1, so 1 minus 0 times x. So from here, we get y is equal to 6x. Okay, c is the intercept. So you can see this is touching the y-axis at point 0. That is why we are writing it as 0. So our signal, we can say it to be equal to 60. And now the practice problem gives the value of the signal in terms of Fourier. So this is the value of the signal. So we'll be using this as an input. So this will be our source signal in mathematical form. So this is the signal now, and we have to find we have to find output V O T. Now, as you have learned, that it is easier for us to convert the circuits in phasor form and solve it, and then go back to the time domain. We'll do the same here. We'll convert this circuit into phasor form. So only the capacitors, the resistance remains same, and the capacitor in phasor is one over J omega C or J omega N C. So our circuit in phasor will become one over J omega N C. The input voltage, which was V S T, will will write now it in capital form V S in phasor form. Similarly, the output voltage V O T in phasor form will write it capital V O and 
This is the input if we compare it with the standard equation from the book then the first term is the DC component. So in our case also the first term will be DC components. So I'm for my ease I'm just writing DC with this one and then similarly this part is the AC component so I'll call this as VSAC. So the input signal is now I'm dividing into two part DC part and AC part. Okay, now for DC component, we have learned that V as DC is 3, and therefore output V O DC will be 3. How? Now, you know, for DC, the capacitor be behaves like an open circuit. So the capacitor is open circuit, so whatever is the voltage here will appear here, will appear here, will appear here. That means V out will also be 3 volt. Okay, now coming to the AC part, this one. Now this is what we are doing, we are just taking N out, so it will be 6 divided by N pi, and summation remains as it is. And I hope you recall that to convert into phasor, we have to convert the sinusoidal signal into cosine form. So if it is in cosine form, we can directly write the magnitude and phase angle. So our signal was in sine, we'll convert it into cosine, and from sine to cosine conversion, we have to just use a negative 90 degree. Okay, so this is converted into cosine and now we'll just write this whole thing as it is and here we'll write the magnitude 1 and angle 90. Just compare this, Vm, now here the uh, ma magnitude is this one, so this magnitude and angle, so our angle is minus 90. So we'll write this. So this is our uh, VSAC in the phasor form. And so our circuit will now be, we are applying the phasor signal and this is the circuit that we'll solve to find V naught. Okay, by voltage division rule, this is our input and we divide it by R and uh, the capacitor part and multiplied by the capacitor value. So we can say that V out AC is V S AC divided by R plus one divided by J omega C and multiplied by one J omega and C. Simplifying, uh, we are now taking this on the right hand side and this on the numerator, taking LCM from here, and we now both the denominators can be cancelled, so this will be the value. And now what is RC? Now R is 2 and C is 1, so 2 into 1. So this will be 1 plus J 2 omega N. And how much is omega N? We have already learned that omega N is N omega naught. And omega naught was 2 pi. So it will be 2 pi N as 2 N pi or 2 pi N. So we will replace now this omega N. So it will be 1 plus j 4 n pi uh, from here 2 and 2 will be 4. And now we multiply by uh, the uh, phasor form of the input which was this one, so multiplying that. We could have put in the value uh, here, but it will make it complicated. So we are just keeping it as, as J omega and 
now we have put in value here so this is the b goes ac let's see if you can further simplify so we were here and this we can see multiplying minus 6 angle minus 90 1 plus j4 and then n pi and now we are still in phaser v out phaser will be v out dc phaser and v out ac phaser v out dc phaser we have found to be 3 and v out ac phaser is this one so writing now uh, this is the total output in phaser form and now we this is you can see a the complex form so we'll try to resolve it in magnitude and phase angle and i hope you recall that the complex form or the rectangular form can be written as the magnitude angle and the magnitude is under uh, under root x square y square and the angle is tangent universe y over x using this we can now write 6 pi we have taken here then what is left is 1 minus 90 and this one we will have to take the under root and a square so under root and a square this n comes here and the angle is tangent inverse y over x so this is our y this is x so we get this now and now we are going back to the time domain so you can see if we have the magnitude and angle then we can write it as the magnitude cosine theta cosine omega t plus phi so we'll use that same technique that in this in time domain 3 will remain like this 6 pi remain like this this one will be cosine 2 pi and t because our signal was 2 pi and t so 2 pi and t minus 90 this remains same angle remains here so we were up to this point now we'll move the angle up okay first of all our question was in sine form so it is better that we convert this into sine form and from cosine to sine we you can use this so cosine positive 90 and cosine minus 90 so in our case it is minus 90 will give us sine positive you can see they are opposite so positive sign so we get positive sign here and the rest everything remains like that and when we move this angle up it will subtract from the sign so subtracting angle so this is our answer and so final answer we'll write it in this form uh, so many voltages now the problem is that in the book i think the answer is wrong and i have checked i've spent a couple of times i've checked various source the solution uh, in the uh, from Hulna university uh, and then there is another video also on the net so this is the answer given in the book which is i believe wrong if you can find out that i am wrong please let me know so i can correct myself so i hope you have been able to follow this please let me know through your feedback thank you